his destiny in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody shout it better. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together, celebrate Jesus, and you may have your seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody happy to be in God's presence tonight. For everyone joining us online, I wanted to take distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's word. This is going to be short. We're going to spend more time in prayers. We're going to partake of the communion. So I wanted to get, you know, communion materials, you know, uh, uh, bread, biscuits, wafers, whatever you can get, and, you know, whether it's, you know, non-alcoholic wine or juice, get it, and j just, just get ready to, be, uh, to partake of the communion table tonight. The month of May will not leave you the same. Uh, I decree in the name of Jesus, somebody here, you will experience newness in this new month. Fresh revelations, new understanding. The light of God will shine upon your path. Amen. Where darkness has prevailed, we declare in May there's a new dawn. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will somebody shout it better? Amen. Amen. I want to just speak briefly tonight. I don't even know how to title this message. This is just an overflow of uh, for Tizo, if I can put it that way. And I hope you're getting ready for Friday and this entire weekend. This is just an overflow of thoughts and, you know, a revelation knowledge that God is giving. And I, 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 I feel the Holy Spirit nudging my heart that we should pray in this direction tonight. Psalm 46, we'll read from verse 1 to the end. Uh, Psalm 46 from verse 1 to the end. I believe that God is manifesting himself as that, you know, God that is mighty in battle. And I want to bring you some understanding tonight so that you can position appropriately as you go into this new month. God is breaking chains. Uh, people who have been held down, situations that have, you know, kind of remained the same. I see God uh, moving you past that level in this new month in the name of Jesus. Uh, can we read it together, everyone in the house, everyone online from verse 1 of uh, Psalm 46, 1 through go? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth is removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling. Sailor, there is the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Yeah. The nations rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Look at this. Verse 7. Let's read it together. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolation in the earth. He makes what? What seas to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cut the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted on the hurt. The Lord of hosts is our refuge. I mean, let's read it, verse 11 one more time. One more time. One more time. For the last time. Praise God. That's the reason why I made you read verse 11 over and again. Because verse 7 and verse 11 uh, emphasize a dimension of God. In the midst of all this, there was a description. This psalm is a psalm of the sons of Korah. 
you know, uh, they, they, they describe situations that can arise. You know, nations may rage, they, 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 you know, they, 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 the mountains may, you know, may move into the midst of the sea, all kinds of things may be happening, but I love the refrain in verse 7 and verse 11, which introduce you and I to a dimension of God that we must pay attention to. Uh, verse 7 says, the Lord of all is, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Verse 11 says the same thing. The Lord of hosts is what? Can you look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor the Lord of hosts is with you? Say Yahweh is with you. Say the man of war is with you. Say the God of Jacob is our refuge. I want to speak to you tonight, you know, like I said, about the God of Jacob. And the dimension of God that you see, especially as you study and ask yourself the question, who is the God of Jacob? You know, in the Bible, we talk about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Isaac and then the God of Jacob. And if you study the Bible very well, there are dimensions of operation when you address God as the God of Abraham, one or two things will come to your mind. Yeah. When you address God as the God of Isaac, one or two things will come to your mind. When you address God as the God of Jacob, which, you know, in this psalm, was talking about that Lord of hosts is with us. In verse 2 or so, it says, is the ever-present help in the time of trouble. Jacob was one person who got into trouble fairly frequently. <laughs> All the patriarchs got into trouble one way or the other, but the troubles were different. But when you talk about the God who shows up to fight somebody's battle, to defend the covenant on behalf of another, that is the God of Jacob. That's the God of Jacob. When you talk about the God who can handle the spirit of labor, that is the God of Jacob. I'm sharing this today, and as we go into this weekend of Otizo, for somebody to understand something, that in flourishing and living the life of abundance, you have your part to play. And we're going to be expansion on that from Friday into Sunday. And I believe those messages are things you go with to listen over and again. But, that's part of the fact that you have your part to play, even when your obedience is complete. What the scripture says is that we should have the readiness to avenge all disobedience when our own obedience is complete. It's one thing for your obedience to be complete. It's another thing for you to understand how to avenge all disobedience. Because uh, it's not about what we do. Only it's about what God can do. Is somebody still with me today? It's not only about what we do. It's about what God can do. And what God is able to do on our behalf because of the covenant. And, you know, this evening, I, I just want you uh, to, to, to follow me very carefully. Because we see the manifestations of the God of Jacob in the encounter that Jacob had in the house of Laban. If you've never read about uh, Jacob and Laban before, uh, the story started, I think, from Genesis 29 down to Genesis 31. You know, the major part of those three chapters of the Bible have been dedicated towards the story of the encounter of Jacob in the house of Laban. We're going to read a, a couple of that today. I may not be able to read a lot because of time, but I, I want you to understand one thing that when the spirit operating through the life of Laban starts to operate in the pathway of a person in destiny, the person will experience delays. Yeah. Sometimes delays that are not orchestrated by your action. You, you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, but you have just encountered a Laban or somebody with the spirit of labor, as the case may be. And that is the time that you need the God of Jacob to be in manifestation. That you need to walk in the covenant with the revelation knowledge of God 
as the Lord of hosts who is with us and the God of Jacob who is our refuge. Are you still with me today? I said, are you still here? Very important. It's very important. Uh, in Genesis 29, let's check one or two things out here. The Bible says in, in uh, uh, verse number five, Jacob got into Aaron. I mean, J J Jacob uh, got into, you know, the, the east where his mom came from, Rebecca. And, um, I mean, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, the, the mother of, uh, of, of Jacob. After he had an encounter in his father's house, where he, he got the bat right, you know, and Esau was angry and all that, and his mother organized for him to just escape. On his way, he had an encounter with God, the God of Bethel. He encountered Yahweh, the man of war, at Bethel, and he promised God, if you go with me as I go, and you bring me back here, he said, I'll give you 10% of everything. Jacob was not ordinarily a bad negotiator because the negotiation that he had with God at Bethel, you should reckon with that. And you should know that he had sense from his father's house. It was that same sharp mind that he used to corner some things in his father's house. So he was not, uh, when it comes to negotiation, he was not an ordinary somebody, if I can put it that way. Because God did not ask him for anything when he started negotiating with God at Bethel. If you go with me as I go, and you bring me back, you know, and all that, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. But when Jacob uh, encountered this, the spirit of Laban, he looked like an amateur negotiator. Yeah. He looked like somebody, <laughs> you know, there's a way, uh, I, I don't know how to put this, but anyone that influence of my voice tonight who has been negotiating badly, as you go into the month of May, the hold of that thing is broken over your life. Yeah. Yeah. My God will empower you to see where it's go taking you in destiny. Yeah. You will no longer negotiate to your own disadvantage yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So in verse number five of Genesis 29, the Bible says, then he said to them, do you know Laban? That's when he got to where his mother came from. Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know him. So he said to them, is he well? And they said, he's well. And look, his daughter, Rachel, is coming with a sheep. Then he said, look, it is still high day. It is not time for the cattle to be watered, I mean, to, to be gathered together. Uh, water the sheep and go and feed them. But they said, we can not until all the flocks are gathered together and they have rolled the stone from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. Now, while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lift, lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was a father's relative then and, and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told the father, this was the beginning of everything, the beginning of the story, the beginning of his encounter with his uncle, Laban. Because sometimes the person operating with the spirit of Laban may be a family member. You know, Laban <laughs> was his uncle. Uh, uh, sometimes Laban is your boss. You know, some other time, uh, the person under the influence of the spirit of Laban is your partner in business. Yeah. And some other time, it's your partner that you are considering to marry. <laughs> I pray for somebody trusting God for a marital partner that God will help you to escape Laban. 
and anyone carrying the spirit of labor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, somebody say a better amen. amen. Let me move fast. So that was the beginning. Laban met Jacob, said you are the bone of my bone, just like Adam and Eve, I'm flesh of my flesh. I'm going to take care of you. If you think I'm kidding, uh, <laughs> look at uh, verse 14. And Laban said to him, surely you are my bone and my flesh. He thought it was only Adam that said it to Eve. <laughs> said you are my bone and you are my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. And after one month, then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? He sounded like a very good uncle. Yeah. Tell me what should your wages be? Now, Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful, of form and appearance. Now, Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Now, this wasn't bad in itself. Yeah, in the sense that he loved Rachel and was willing to pay certain price. The only problem was that he was dealing with the wrong person. And much more than that was that he was losing his cutting edge with negotiation. Because Jacob did not, and the Bible never referenced that back in the day, there was a particular number of years that you have to serve to get a babe. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this guy, I don't know how he just blotted out seven years. Why not two and a half? <laughs> or three? Yeah. Or even five, the number of grace. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Where did he just get seven years from? You know, sometimes, but you get what I'm saying very soon, that there, there, there was something already in that atmosphere. There's a place you get to that you, you, you just begin to behave like an amateur. You understand? You, you, you're not just sure of, you know, maybe what to say. And rather than asking the Holy Ghost, rather than saying, Father, help me here today, because the, 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 the place where you are, the person you are dealing with, the spirit that's operating there is not your league. You are not at the same level. Yeah. And it starts to happen as you start to become jittery and just say certain things. You would think Laban will have a certain measure of, uh, uh, how do I put it, pity on him. Ah, this boy does not know how to negotiate. Don't worry, I'll give you 50% discount. You spent three and a half years, you know, and all that. No. He got him at seven. And she supplanted him to give him the wrong person. Seven years. This guy was really in love, and that's great. And was willing to spare seven years. But Jacob saw that, ah, if he can do seven years for this one, he can do seven years for the other one too. Let's turn it around. May you not meet Laban in your life. Let me quickly say a few things here. Uh, the spirit of labor is powered by greed, self-centeredness, insecurity, and manipulation. When you see all that in one, in one transaction, in one person, in one atmosphere, you need the Holy Ghost to survive it. Yeah. You know, some, some of us here who are business people, you understand what I'm saying. You get into you know, a meeting, a transaction. You have to be sure that you, you have come with revelation of the God that is powering you and the covenant that you carry. If not, you can negotiate wrongly. You, you, you can say things you are not supposed to say. And I'm praying for someone, as you partake of the communion today, your mouth will no longer sabotage your destiny. Your heart will no longer sabotage your destiny. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you see the spirit of labor in manifestation, some things are about to be unleashed. Yeah. It causes a delay in destiny. So that the journey of 40 days can take somebody 40 years. This, and it's, it, it comes out of mostly bad negotiation. 
spirit of Laban also seek to cheat people of their appropriate wage. When you have worked somewhere for, you know, three years, five years, you know, all this number of years, some people, you know, sometimes you ask yourself the question, how can somebody work somewhere for five, six, seven years, no remarkable increase, no promotion, nothing. And the people in charge of promotion and all that, they'll keep promising you or say some sweet nothing, you know. At the end of every year, there's always an explanation. Because you wonder how Jacob eventually, I think, spent about 21 years or so in the house of labor. Yeah. And it started with after one month of being here, you are my bone and you are my flesh. You are not supposed to just serve me anyhow. If that day, Jacob knew that this was the journey of 21 years, he would pack his load the next day <laughs> and find somewhere else to go. Knowing that the spirit that is operating in this uncle is not correct. This is, this is not the right place to be. Yeah. So, choosing people out of their wage, holding back people's destiny. That's the operation of the spirit of labor. When you are in a toxic work environment, where you can't even express yourself, yeah, or where whatever you say, there's already a manipulative arrangement to sort the situation out. Know that you are in a place where the spirit of Laban is at work. When you see signals about wrong partnerships in business, where it's difficult for somebody's word to be their bond, and there's no, I mean, it's a low trust partnership. It can gradually push you into being under the operations of the spirit of Laban. Truth about Laban is that Laban recognized, even after a while, he knew what Jacob was carrying, both spiritually and physically. Jacob was not a slothful person. He was a, an extremely diligent person. From day one in Genesis 29 that I read, and I'm probably going to be able to read from Genesis 30 and 31 for you to understand what I'm saying. This guy came. They were still dilly darling about how to open the well and all that. The woman he saw his uncle's animals and the daughter, he went and opened the well immediately and watered the animal. And from that day, he didn't stop serving this man. Serving this man. So Laban knew that he was very, very diligent. Laban confessed with his own mouth in Genesis 30, when you read from verse 27, and Laban said to him, verse 27 of Genesis chapter 30, please stay if I found favor in your sight, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. How did he know? He probably consults some of his oracles because later you see that he had idols at home. You know, when Jacob was eventually going, uh, Rachel stole some of the, his father's idols. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. You know from the beginning where Abraham came from, his idol they were worshipping him. Before God revealed himself to Abraham and said, I will be your God and you are going to leave this place. So that was where we went back to Laban's place. Laban must have consulted spirits to understand that this boy carries something. This boy has something. <laughs> so he said, God has, the Lord, the Lord, which is Yahweh, the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, name your wages and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, you know how I've served you and how your livestock has been with me for what you had before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when I shall also, uh, when shall I also provide for my own family? So, I said this for you to understand that if anybody's under the influence of my voice, and you feel like 
you're in a bad work environment, you're working with the wrong person, or you're working with a difficult business partner, a cheat, a supplanter, you, you've experienced any form of stagnation at work, this communion tonight is for you. Yeah. Because something is going to break loose. The God of Jacob that took Jacob from the house of Laban <laughs> and set up a whole nation from him, Israel. That God that held Jacob to the point that Laban in all his intrigues, go and read Genesis 31 very well. After they agreed on Jacob's wage from this, uh, from verse 27 that I was reading, Laban changed that wage 10 times. Not one, not twice. And it was always downward review or something that will limit what he earned. Here, in, in, you know, in, in verse 27 of Genesis 30, this was Jacob just agitating to say, I want to go. By the time you get to Genesis 31, God told Jacob, it's time for you to move. And then God, you know, kind of swing into action and started taking charge <laughs> and manifesting himself. And that's what I see happening in somebody's life here. Amen. That God has to show himself as the God of Jacob in your life. Amen. Oh, somebody say a better amen. amen. Second Thessalonians 3, when you read from uh, verse 2 and 3, Paul was, was praying there and he said something very important. In, in verse 1, he asked that, he said, pray for us. I mean, give me verse 1 quickly. Follow me, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord will, uh, may, may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. Verse 2 says, and that we may be what? Read it, read it with energy. Yeah. Glory to God. He said that we may be delivered from who? For not all men have faith. Give me a message translation of verse 2. Uh, he said, I'm praying that we will be rescued from these troublemakers who are trying to do us in. I'm finding that not all believers in commerce, inverted commerce, not all believers are believers. <laughs> I'm saying this for you to recognize that sometimes you may be dealing with a Christian whom because of the spirit of greed or greed has eaten deep in their heart, they are operating in the spirit of labor. And Paul was saying here, said, you know, pray for us that God will deliver us from unreasonable and wicked men, troublemakers. People who just, the Bible says to supplant a man, to subvert a man in the cause that he has chosen, the Lord does not approve. That God that does not approve, that's the God of Jacob. When you want to subvert someone in the, in the, in the path that they have chosen. You know, for some people, the only thing is for God to give you discernment, not to get into their hand. And I pray for somebody here, anyone, that is in whatever kind of accord that is orchestrated by the devil to stop your advancement, to stop your flourishing. Whether you are aware of it now or not, I pray in this month of May, God will break that bondage. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, anyone that has been held down unjustly, whether you are aware now that you are held or not, in this month of May, my God will open your eyes. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. What enables the operation of spirit of labor, you know, with believers especially, one is lack of discernment. The second one is emotionalism. Yeah, lack of discernment. It took Jacob a long time to know that his uncle Laban is a useless human being. Yeah. It took too long. Yeah, too long. 21 years is a lot. 
And sometimes, some of us, you know, just, just outright negligence. Yeah. Young man, listen to me. Young lady, listen to me. Relationships are too important for you to be pedestrian about the arrangement. Yeah. Somebody is showing sign. <laughs> you know, showing sign. Do you know the truth? If I was Jacob, if I spent that 14 years because of Rachel, one day will not pass because this man cannot be trusted. Yeah. Anyone that can show you to double <laughs> seven years to 14 years, you should not spend one day extra. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But some of us, we just, you know, after somebody has lied to you three times, you are still saying it will change. Some Christians will even say it is where. You know, sometimes you sit down in counseling, you know that, ah, the spirit of labor is in operation here. Because this person has been so manipulated, almost manipulated and negotiated out of their destiny. And they are still sitting there. An end has come to it as you partake of the communion today. For anyone watching online, the hold of the spirit of manipulation is broken over your life today. As you partake of the communion today, the hold of manipulation, every spirit of manipulation, whatever I want to subvert you on your pathway in destiny, whatever the enemy has orchestrated to limit your advancement, your flourishing, your stepping into abundance must come to an end today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say it better, amen. amen. As I wrap this up, sometimes it's just simple emotionalism. Yeah, just being excessively emotional. You know in the house of Laban, <laughs> two women are involved. Jacob was in love. He may not have loved Leah, but he loved Rachel, and he loved Rachel well. And you know, sometimes some of this thing about family, about, you know, sometimes about how long the relationship has been. Sometimes about we are the same blood. Sometimes it's about many things that can so creep in to the point that one becomes unnecessarily emotional. Unnecessarily emotional. I will forever salute the courage of Abraham in the book of, this same book of Genesis. When, in the story of Abraham and Lot, when he got to a point where the headsmen of Abraham and the headsmen of Lot were headbutting and having, and Abraham had to, you know, call Lot to say, Abro, younger brother, come, or nephew, come. See this thing. It cannot continue like this. I know we're family, but this place is now no longer going to, yeah. So just choose what you want and just, just be going. In most cases in life, until the whole arrangement is collapsing on the head of the two of them, some people don't have the gut to say, though we're family, but this is not okay. Yeah. Though we're being... We've known each other for, the, I mean, since the beginning of our life, but this is not okay. There's a point that someone gets to when God is at work in your life that you'll be able to say, this is not okay. This is not okay. And it, it's, it's either we resolve it or because uh, I have my destiny to fulfill. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying today. Glory be to Jesus. May God deliver somebody from emotionalism. In the precious name of Jesus. Uh, I want you to rise on your feet. Rise on your feet, everyone. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. So step into this new month. We see grace. Grace to walk in discernment. Grace to walk with the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus.
grace to pick divine instructions in the name of Jesus. I said grace to pick divine instructions in the name of Jesus. Grace to have difficult conversations in the name of Jesus. Grace to have difficult conversation starting with yourself in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody lift your voice right now and just bless the name of the Lord Jesus as we pray tonight. I see chains break, breaking. I see burdens rolled away. I see God starting something new in somebody's life. I see an end coming to the spirit, the operations of manipulation in somebody's life. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Somebody lift your voice and just pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Lift your two hands to Jesus tonight and say, Father, give me, the, the, give me grace for the assignment afresh. In this new season of my life, I will not go with the wrong person. I will not work with the wrong partner. In the name of Jesus, whether in business, in career, or in life, I receive grace for the summit. I receive grace for the summit. I receive grace for the summit. Lift your voice and speak to God today. Lift your voice and speak to God today. Lift your voice and speak to God today. Say, I receive grace for the summit. I receive grace for the summit. Grace to pick signals quickly. Grace to understand what God is doing quickly. Le karande le kobote ki shatan dara da gavaya. E karande le koto kasi sete. Ye karada gavolo bosha. Reke to korodo bosha. Ibre neke le kataka ya gavara. E korodo bosha soto kala gavaya. Ikende le gavosha. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. In the same vein, I want us to pray right now. Someone is going to receive grace to negotiate well. And in the same vein, you're going to pray against bad negotiations. You know, there are some people right now as you speak, you have a, you, there, there are certain negotiations that are bad that you are already in. God wants to turn them around. God wants to turn them around. Are you ready to pray tonight? You know, these prayer points are very simple, but they are very important. Yeah, because this season, we're talking about abundance, flourishing, working in the covenant. Many Christians are held back from the full manifestation of the covenant in their lives because of these simple things. God has something big for you, you negotiate small. God wants to turn it around for you. Lift your two hands to Jesus tonight. Say, I receive grace to engage in the right negotiation. Say, I receive the spirit of wisdom not to shortchange myself in every negotiation. Lift your hand to Jesus and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Nothing will limit the expression of your destiny any longer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Somebody here, before you speak with your mouth, your heart will give you wisdom. Your mouth will no longer sabotage your destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your heart will instruct you. In the name of Jesus. Before your mouth will speak, your heart will instruct you. In the name of Jesus. Ragata kalaga voshe, ebre dege leke teka, rakatu sosuto prende lege, maradagasha, ike tengla lukoto predeke sita yende. Somebody, I want you to pray, pray. You may be looking for a job right now, but when the time of negotiation will come, may you not negotiate yourself out of God's plan and purpose. For every project that is ahead of you in this new season, receive grace to negotiate properly. Receive grace to negotiate yourself into the fullness of what the covenant has for you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, I want you to pray. 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 
Ikondo prede katika sito. Yembro nonge leke te kashanda. Arada gaboya. Moro logo bose. Manto prede ke sito. Ikande lege bosha. Rakata karada gabosha. Henga leke teke lege bosha. Rakata kalaga vayaba. Embre nenke lokoto koro do bosha. Ragatande leke nombre neko to. Yeke rende lege bosha. Arada gataka. Reketende lego bosha. Robote kende lege bosha. E granda la kataka yaga. E kandoro do bosha. E kote kende lekre dike suto yende. Embra nanga la kataka yaga ba. E koro do bosha. Le koto prende li katashe. E granda kolo bo. E kerende lege bosha. E karande le ketea. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We're still praying. We're still praying. I wanted to pray about two things because of time. I'm just trying to very quickly. One is that you are going to break the hold of the spirit of manipulation. In any area of life at all, this is not just about career and business. Because when manipulation is allowed in one area, that spirit is like smoke. It will find itself to other areas. If you allow yourself to be manipulated in one aspect of life, manipulation will continue. Yeah. I want you to speak against spirit of manipulation. And secondly, wherever manipulation has resulted into delay of destiny, tonight you are going to stand against it. In the name of Jesus, my destiny will no longer be delayed. But I want you to start out tonight, cancel the operation of the spirit of manipulation around your life, at home, at work, within family. We break the hold of the spirit of manipulation. Every agent of manipulation We stand against the operation in the name of Jesus. Stand against the operation of lying tongues around your life, around your career, around your business. We break the hold of lying tongues. In the name of Jesus, we receive the spirit of might to stand against manipulation. In the name of Jesus, manipulation in friendship. I want you to stand against it in the name of Jesus. No one will take advantage of my destiny. In the name of Jesus, Marada Galaka Busha, Rakuto Prozio Rende Legatesha, Ekarande Legaboshe, Ekatande Lekrodo Prode Lekata. Pray tonight, an end has come to the oppression of the spirit of manipulation around your life. In the name of Jesus, Lekorondo Predeka, receive the spirit of boldness to stand against every manipulation. In the name of Jesus, Rakata Kalaga Bosha, Yeke de Lekere de Bosha, Aketo Prende Legata, Yekorondo Predenga Legata, Marande Lege Bosha, Ekorodo Bosse, Yekanda Likete Kalo Predike Suta, Arada Galegato, Yekrando Lo Predenga Legate, Arada Gavayaba, Rokoto Korodo Gobos, Yekende Lege Bosha. Alla gata karada, he came to pray the lake tika. Engra no korondo pray the lake tika yande. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name, I said in Jesus' precious name. Very quickly, Genesis 31. When you read from verse 22, Genesis 31, verse 22, the Bible says, and Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. Then he took his brethren with him and pursued him for seven days. Seven days journey. And he overtook him in the mountain of Gilead. Look at verse 24. But the God of Jacob showed up. But God had come to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night. And said to him, be careful that you speak 
to Jacob neither good nor bad. So though Laban overtook Jacob, <laughs> and now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mountain of Gilead. So they were there together. Though he overtook Jacob, pursued for seven days, but God showed up and told him, if you touch that guy, you are a dead man. By the time Laban will see Jacob eventually, he went to now negotiate properly to come into one accord with him. You can go with everything, just take care of my daughters, take care of the children, I am at peace with you. The Bible says when the way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. I, I want you to cry out tonight and call the God of Jacob. Remember Psalm 46 and verse number 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Tonight, call the God of Jacob over and against any Laban and the manifestation of the spirit of Laban around your life. Nothing will hold you back in destiny. You will fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has, prayed, has destined for you for this season, you will not be held back in the name of Jesus. The God of Jacob specializes in handling Laban's. I want you to cut short the oppression of the spirit of Laban over your life in the name of Jesus. The God of Jacob is showing up for you. The God of Jacob is showing up for you. In the name of Jesus. Lekato predenka lega bosha. Ragataka laga bosha. Reboto korodo bosha. Manda la kateke lengre doko bosha. Ye morodo bose. E galekata kala. Ye brenda liko tuso suto. Ye brenda lega bosha. Rakataka laga bayaba. E brenda lega bose. Maradaga bose. Ye canto predeke lenda. Ye korodo gobos. Anke teke legere. Maradagata kala garada bosha. Mere de Gebosha. The God of Jacob is showing forth for somebody here. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Rakite compre nenge lekata. The heaven present help in the time of trouble. Rakuto predike lende lege bosha. Ye korodo bosha. Mande legete. Ye kerende lege bosha. Le krodo poto kalaga. Ye karada galaga bosha. He came to prende lege lege bosha. Rakito predenge lege to suta. Rakata kalaga bosha. Marada galaka bosha. Rokotom brenenge lege te. Ye karande lege bosha. Akarada gabosha. Mento predende lende lende. Ide nekoto. Rakatende lege bosha. Membre nenke te kayada. I korodo bose. Langre de kabote. Thank you everlasting father. Thank you everlasting father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus precious name. I said in Jesus' precious name, I have this word for somebody here. Laban may look like more powerful than you. You know, somebody will ask the question sometimes, how do you fight with a multinational? How do you fight with a big man? How do you win over a manipulator that can buy you ten times? That's the story of Laban and Jacob. Anytime you find yourself confronted by the spirit of the ruler, confronted by a principality, confronted by a powerful person who seems to be using his authority wrongly, remember the God of Jacob. He shows up at the appropriate time. Yeah. He shows up at the appropriate time. And that God of Jacob is showing for, up for somebody here. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody here, a contention over a property with a powerful person, 
the God of Jacob will show up for you. Amen. I don't know who you are, but somebody here, oppressed by a landlord, the God of Jacob is showing forth for you. Amen. Yeah. Maybe rent has been collected from you twice on the same property and nothing has been given to you. Uh, on your behalf, somebody will lose their sleep. Yeah. Yahweh will show up in their sleep. Yeah. Somebody, your restoration is coming with speed. God will seize somebody's peace because of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to pray over the communion for everyone at home. Please put the material together. Let's pray over it tonight. As we partake of the communion, the God of Jacob is showing up in somebody's situation. I don't care what the situation is like. The hold of the spirit of Laban is broken. The covenant starts to work on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. Someone this season, you have been shortchanged for your labor for too long. God is going to restore everything that you are whole. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. the God who does not forget is going to show up for you. Yeah. You know, after all the manipulation against the destiny of Jacob, he left the house of Laban an exceedingly blessed man. Even a blind person will know with the size of what Jacob had that God was at work in it. Even Laban knew. Ha, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Grab a copy of, I mean, your, your, your communion material. Open the first layer, which gives you access to the wafer, and then the second layer that gives you access to the wine. Please do it carefully. The first layer, the film, the transparent film, if you open it carefully, you'll be able to access the wafer, and then the colored film that gives you access to the wine. As, as we pray tonight. Everyone at home, everyone joining online, uh, wherever you are right now, I want you to join us as we partake of the communion. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Tonight, we pray over every material in everyone's hand. We set them apart for the reenactment of the covenant. You said we should do this in remembrance of you. As we partake of your body and your blood, let the heavens open afresh. Let anything that may have held anyone down be broken. Let the order of the spirit of manipulation be broken. Let delay be broken. In the name of Jesus, let that be unusual restoration Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let someone's discernment be sharpened tonight. Amen. From this point on, you will begin to make better decisions. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will no longer be supplanted. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will no longer be a victim. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray over somebody's life tonight as you partake of the communion. The healing power of God flows over you. Yeah. It flushes away whatever has not been planted by God. Yeah. Nothing is permitted to grow in your body that is not ordained of God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. by the communion of tonight, someone's sanity is restored. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, by the communion of tonight, someone's sleep is restored. Amen. The hold of sleeplessness is broken. Amen. The hold of worry and anxiety, broken. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. by the communion of tonight, peace is restored into your heart. Amen. Peace restored into your mind. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. by the communion of tonight, the hold of confusion is broken. Your sense of judgment, accuracy in judgment is restored. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By the communion of tonight, 
May new channels of divine supply be open to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everywhere that was producing before that has been blocked by the communion of tonight, we decree that blocked wells are reopened. In the name of Jesus, we decree that angels dig new wells for you. You are brought to the place of new opportunities. Nothing will fail in your hand any longer. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the communion of tonight, we usher you into a new level of abundance. Somebody, move from not enough to more than enough. I say it one more time. Someone, move from not enough to more than enough. Someone, as you partake of this communion, move from just enough to more than enough. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You will no longer be stranded at just enough. The God who promised us abundant life will visit you this season. He moves you from just enough to more than enough. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. So, Lord, we declare this is your body that was broken for us. And as we partake of this tonight, we'll remember your body that was broken for us. Your body was broken so that our own body will no longer be broken. So we thank you for healing and health and the confirmation of every word spoken here tonight. Thank you, everlasting Father. We thank you for your blood that was shed for us. It is the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. As we partake of it tonight, let our consciences be purged from dead works. Let new life come into somebody. Let grace come to please you. In the name of Jesus, let the hold of besetting sin be broken. Let someone be liberated from addiction. Let the power of the resurrected Christ come upon someone afresh. Thank you, everlasting Father. Let your name be glorified. Please go ahead and partake of the communion. On the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, oh, 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 oh. on the center of it all, it's you that I see, oh, it's you that I see.
Everybody who is blessed tonight, put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, let's do it a little better. Do it a little better. Do it a little better. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. Have your seat. 